Good morning and welcome. Just a couple announcements um, that are posted in your bulletin, but we do have church council tomorrow night at 6.30. Um, and then any newsletter items that you want to share, I'll just have them to her um, by this Friday. Um, then I just want to take a couple minutes to thank both congregation members on and off council that have kind of helped navigate this process. The Synod is still actively looking for us for an interim pastor. And like I said, I've had congregation members both on and off council that have willingly stepped up and kind of helped navigate through this process. So for that, I'm very grateful. And I will turn to Barb Nelson to continue leading worship. Ooh, that one's on. Okay. Will you join with me on page 211 for the confession and forgiveness? This morning we'll use the right side column. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all arts are open, all desires known, from whom all secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Page 212. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent in your compassion. Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's join in singing um, the hymn of this morning. All are welcome on page 651.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please turn to your bulletin and join in praying together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for today comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48, and you can find that on the New Testament page 158. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm for today is Psalm 98, and you can find that on page 678. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second lesson is 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, and you can find that on the New Testament page 293. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been, get, has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who, be, who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And, this, and the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here ends the second lesson. The gospel reading for today comes from John chapter 15 verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I, has, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. 
and so that whatever you may ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Now I invite the kids to come forward for our kids' talk. Good morning. morning. Today's sermon is written by Pastor Chip, so we thank him for um, 
giving us um, his sermon is called A Love Letter. I have asked this question before. How does anyone explain the way love works? It's a difficult task for loving someone usually means we, ha we behave differently than we usually do. We enter a different place of human being when we realize we love someone, things we would not do before we will now do. We haven't had too many occasions to talk about love and loving. Our new vocabulary is unpracticed, and the words are not always managed very well. Even Jesus seems a little clumsy in this reading from John. He makes astounding commitments to us for the sake of loving us, and yet at the same time seems to almost over-explain himself in saying them. At first reading, or at the first hearing, his verbal tugging at the truth of his love seems to offer more confusion than clarity. It takes time to digest the meaning of everything he is saying to his disciples, and also to us. Some might find that clumsiness disappointing in their Lord, but others will hear a ring of authenticity in it. If we know anything about loving others, we know that love is something that overthrows us. We surrender to love in a way that means we are less on top of things and less in control. We are a little undone ourselves by the power of the love we feel. We stammer when we speak. We hope to be understood. We describe at length, and we illustrate by example. We try hard to explain the way this love has taken over our lives and changed us forever. And that is what we hope will happen when in response to our declaration of love. Here in this passage is our very own Lord and Savior, so divinely human in his attempt to express his love and what it means that surely we cannot help but love him back. Listen to what he says. As the Father has loved me, so I have also loved you. Abide in my love. It is an amazing comparison. Jesus' love is the way the Father has loved Jesus. It is like the domino effect. Divine love spills over every edge that looks like the place where it will stop, but instead finding another cup to receive it. This love reaches into our lives and becomes a place to stay a place to wait, and a place to abide. Abide in my love, Jesus says, who among us can think of a better place to be? Yet Jesus goes on to lift us out of any passive understanding of our relationship of love. Abiding in his love is not a default setting in our spiritual program. It is a consequence of keeping his commandments. Just as for Jesus abiding in the Father's love is a consequence of his keeping the Father's commandments. Jesus is quick to ensure we understand that nothing is expected of us that has not been expected of him. All this, Jesus says, in our own best interest. There is joy to be had, and the completing of our joy will come our way because Jesus is telling us all about abiding in his love. This is the language of love, impossible promises that become believable because love itself, which seemed impossible, has now become believable. If divine love is about anything less than completing our joy, it is not to be believed. It is good to pause for a moment and realize that on occasions we have sold short the love of Jesus. We have not drawn the connecting line between the love and the completing of our joy. Jesus draws that line here. Once we are in this amazing place where love surrounds us and keeps watch with us, where love fills every crack in our lives until joy is all that remains. Jesus leads out of ourselves. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The way Jesus makes it possible for us to reach beyond ourselves, the way Jesus loves us allows us the goal of this love to be greater than our personal fulfillment. Jesus wants us to see that clearly. The love in which we abide is greater than any securities, any fear, and any death. We cannot claim Jesus' love and stay self-absorbed. Jesus' love will not submit to lesser powers that turn us inward. The whole point of abiding in his love is the end of anything that keeps us from reaching out to the life that is all around us. As we 
But as we move out of ourselves, Jesus struggles to articulate our new relationship with him, no longer servants. We are his friends. But the friendship has the perimeters of commandments placed upon it, and we cannot help but stumble here. To our ears, friendship based on obeying commandments doesn't make sense. It's just, is Jesus playing word games with us? Nope, but what he says is confusing. We have to think differently what he has said here. The commandments we are given are not given to demonstrate the relationship of a servant and a master. The commandment to love becomes, in fact, the way to leave that servant-master relationship behind. In the obeying of the commandment to love, we achieve an intimacy and fellowship with Jesus that is the common ground for fellowship and friendship. He meets us there in the loving as our friend. Jesus has reinterpreted the role of commandments. We have to hear that reinterpretation before we can fully participate. It is difficult for us to leave behind our preconceived notions about what commandment means in a relationship. Yet this is probably the most exciting thing Jesus says to us. He is using commandment in a brand new way to achieve a brand new relationship. By mutually submitting to love in its course, we achieve a friendship with Jesus, not possible before this. The servants now know what the master is doing. If and when they participate in it, they cease to be servants and become friends. This discussion on love then returns to the theme of the larger scripture context for this reading. We are back into the language of the vine, the branches, and the vine grower. This is all about bearing fruit. However, in the context of love, it is not striving to bear fruit or hoping that we will bear fruit. Rather, bearing fruit is a supernatural con consequence of abiding in Jesus' love and becoming his friends by loving others. How does anyone explain the way love works? Bookstores are full of titles that attempt to offer explanations. TV and talk shows seek to reveal the explanation of the way love works by demonstrating how love should not work. Yet nothing satisfies us, nothing answers that question as much as a loving relationship. How does Jesus explain the way his love works? The ancient words become the living promise by the power of the Spirit. The body of believers becomes the body of Christ by the power of the Spirit. The body of believers becomes the body of Christ by the power of the, of the Spirit. And the invitation to faith becomes the explanation of his love by the power of the Spirit. By opening our lives in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we know the way his love works. Do not hesitate to abide in love that Jesus Christ gives us. Let his words today be his reaching into our lives with the very thing that will complete our joy. There is a time to claim for ourselves the love of God that is in Jesus Christ. Let, it, let his be the time to abide in his love. Amen. And if I can ask you to pray. Dear Lord, from its very beginning, O oh God, your church has been built upon upon a foundation of love, a love that surrounds us, supports us, and sustains us. Your love sent your son Jesus among sinful human beings to live out new ways of relating to one another and to you. Your son loved us even to his own death, drawing us back to, to you from the long estrangement of sin. His resurrection sings of your great and gracious love, calling us to turn to love to one another. For that love, supreme and sublime, yet particular and present, which draws us together as your church. We thank you, O oh God. May we seek in this life to grow ever closer to your loving perfection. We pray in the name who has love, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
may stand as you are able and turn to page 217 and let's um, confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 217. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With the whole people of God and Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, today we thank you for our mothers and all women throughout the world who fulfill the role of one who cares and nurtures growth in others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, please guide our congregation through the transition and pastors. Sustain us and strengthen our bonds as we go through this process. Help us to seek your will as we move forward. Lord, in your mercy. Be with and grant healing to any in our community who are suffering at this time from illness, loneliness, or loss. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for our daily blessings we enjoy, for food and clothing, home and family, friends and neighbors, and all we need from day to day. Lord, in your mercy. Help us to always be mindful and abide in your great love for us. Help us to love one another as you loved us. Help us to love each other more than material things or our own selfish ambitions. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you most of all for your salvation that we know through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Join with me in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Join in singing our closing hymn. It's found on page 650. In Christ there is no east or west. You may be seated if you wish.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.